Let's take a look and see what family we've got here. Hi, I'm Nina. This is my husband, Paul, and we're the Cantoni family. Nick. No. <laughs> Nicholas. What happened, honey? Anthony, the screaming. We have a son, Nicholas, who's six. <laughs> a daughter, Gabrielle, who's three. You see him! And another daughter, Gianna, who's one. Give me the shovel. Gabrielle, give it to Daddy now. <laughs> the main issue with Gabby is she is very bossy and very demanding. <laughs> talks back a lot. When she wants something, it's now. The world revolves around Gabby, mm -hmm. and you need to do what she says immediately. Don't pinch. No yeah. biting, Gab! The, ow, ow! Don't bite. That little girl is ruling roost here. Nicholas's back talking is definitely a problem for us. You need a nap? No. Do I look like a baby? Talk to me. Be quiet! Your children need to have some respect for you. Did you shut the game off? Yes! You have six minutes. In a lot of ways, we want to laugh at it, but it, it's not its not OK. It's not funny. Six minutes in your room. It's disrespectful. No, I want you to fart more loud, make more sticks. Nicholas, Nicholas. Daddy, Daddy does Don't that talk like things. that at the dinner table. I'm the yeller. I yell a lot more than Paul. In bed now. You're going to get a whack on your butt if you continue to talk to me that way. Is that understood? Dad lets a lot more go, so. I'm good cop, she's bad cop. Nick, want to break out a deck of cards and play Texas Hold'em? I don't find it amusing. It's bedtime. Well, sit on it, you know. No, it's time for bed. These parents really don't see eye to eye. In bed. No! Yes, come on. No! Bedtime is very hectic. Gabrielle is out a lot. 20, 30 times, she's very difficult to put down. <laughs> what is going on at bedtime? Our lives got to change. We have to make something happen because we're both at wit's end. Gabby, look at that. Stop. No! You Nick. Know what, honey, please. Super Nanny, it's out of control around here. Can you please come and help us? You all right? You guys do need my help. Hang in there because I'm on my way. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. Pleased to meet you. I'm Joe Frost. Nice to meet you too, Nina. I can't tell Hi, Nina. My first impressions of Joe, I felt relieved to know that help was here. Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. Hello. Can you shake my hand? Say hi. Shake her hand. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Gabrielle, say hi. Hi, Gabrielle. Oh, hello. When I first arrived, Nina was there with the three children and they were all very pleasant and come up to me. Even baby Gianna waddled up to me and put her little hands up for a hug. <laughs> you want to say hello up here? Hi. What happened here? Car accident two years uh, ago. I was in a car accident a while back and, you know, with the pain in my shoulder, hip and back, it makes it really difficult for me to deal with the kids when they're having a tantrum or just not listening. So, Nina, I'm gonna be here for today, observing. So just carry on as normal. Okay. And, um, I'm just gonna take some mental notes. Okay. And watch you, all right? Great. Okay, Thank good. you. Mm. Gabby, what are you doing? Mum was in the kitchen with all three children, and it wasn't long before Gabby started throwing a temper tantrum. No, no, no! <laughs> Look at Mum. You cannot put water in it. You can't. You can't. <gasps> you know what? No! You can pretend. Come on, want to go get your teacup and we'll pretend? You know what? Time out. Time out for the girl who hits. Come on. No. No! You can't take a bath now, honey. Come on, come with Mommy. We go, we'll go have a tea party. Mum went from threatening Gabby with time out to throwing a tea party. Is that her idea of discipline? Daddy is home. Hello. Hi. Hi. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Are... When I got home from work and walked in the door and I saw Joe, my first impression was that she was very straightforward, down to business, let's get the show on the road. When Paul got home, dinner was going really well until Nicholas decided he wanted a little extra attention and did something totally unacceptable. Are you are you an animal? 
I was very angry what Nicholas did at dinner with eating off of Paul's plate. And then when I responded to him, like, we don't eat like that, he spit it back onto Paul's dinner plate. That's just something that I will not tolerate. Unacceptable now. Don't ever do that again. Whatever. Nina got fired up at dinner for Nicholas chewing my food and spitting it back out on my plate. It wasn't really a, too big of a deal to me, but that's part of where Nina and I don't really see eye to eye. Would you say that you got, do you guys agree with some things with parenting or is it a bit mitchy matchy, a bit <laughs> wishy washy? I would say that. It's wishy washy. You're both <laughs> wishy, very wishy washy. Very wishy washy. Very. Nina is the person who holds down all the boundaries and guidelines, and Paul's the person who likes to have fun and be the silly daddy. After dinner, the children had some free time before they were supposed to go to bed. Nick, all right, give me the broken bat. Nick, let it go now. Give me the ball. <laughs> These kids are so hyped up. I just don't know how Nina and Paul expect them to go to sleep soon. She doesn't want to. She hates them. I know you want daddy because daddy's gonna take these off of you and you need these on because otherwise you're gonna go pee everywhere. After a long struggle, Nina finally got the diaper on Gabby and then Paul walked in and allowed her to take it off again. How come you're taking no. your diaper off? No, honey, don't let her take it I know Nina was trying to put the diapers on Gabrielle for a long time, but I took them off her because if I hadn't, she would have been throwing a tantrum a long time. As soon as I get something accomplished, I just feel like he comes in and he takes away the accomplishment. And it's so frustrating. All right, come on. You know what? When she gets a little more tired, we'll put those on her. It was finally time to put the children to bed, and I realized it was going to be a long evening for Paul and Nina. It's not funny anymore. Got me? Gabrielle is a nightmare. She just constantly comes out of her bedroom. There's always an excuse for why she doesn't want to go to sleep. I'm more of the old softy when it comes down to letting the kids get away with things they really shouldn't be. I feel like they won't like me as much if if I play the, the hard boss. You want milk in a sippy cup now? No, no, sippy cup and a baba. All right, you want it in a baba? She normally has a sippy cup, but lately she wants a bottle. And have you been giving her a bottle? I don't give her a bottle. Who does? Yeah. So no, no, in my book, a three-year-old drinking out of a bottle, Gabby's not a baby. I want apple juice. You want apple juice? You sure? OK. Gabby, he's constantly wanting more to drink because she knows that Daddy will run down the stairs a hundred times to get it for her. You want grape? Anything to get her quiet. And it just has spiralled out of control now to delay the ultimate, which is Gabby going to bed. She would like milk now. Oh, she wants milk now. She wants milk now. OK. I think some people pay for that service, don't they? I think so. Yeah. We're going to buy a car. Not only does Gabby have her dad wrapped around her little pinky, but why do they give her so much to drink before bedtime? So I wonder why she's still in diapers. Whilst Paul was upstairs with Gabby, I could see that Nina desperately needed somebody to listen to her. But like, when he's home, it's like what he said. He wants to, he's away so much that he just wants to be with them and he wants to make them happy. And when the time he's around them, he just wants to be the good guy. And that's where I get so frustrated because where I set boundaries, I feel like the boundaries are broken. And I feel like it's a constant Poor. So as much as you want him home when he's home, it causes complications. Right, and I hate to say that because I, I want him home, you know what I mean? But it's so hard. Very overwhelming. <laughs> this is overwhelming. Nina's at a breaking point. She's so frustrated and things need to change for this family. So I can't wait to sit down and talk about making those changes.
I observed plenty, so why don't the three of us go and sit down and discuss the issues that I feel need to be addressed? Sure. I am most afraid that Joe is going to tell me that pretty much everything I'm doing is wrong. And I don't think that I'm ready to hear that. Let me say to the pair of you that you have three adorable children who are very delightful, and that was very refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. But... I hate the butts. <laughs> you guys are on opposite teams, and the pair of you should be working together. But you're not doing it. Being a father means upholding discipline, and you're not upholding that part of being a responsible father. It's tough because you want them to be your buddies. <laughs> you want them to love you and like you. Nina, what's a good parent? Somebody who sets boundaries, who has structure and consistency. So you have the buddy and you have the discipline. How does it feel, Paul, when you feel that she nags 24-7? She's short-fused. Tell Paul why you're short-fused. I don't have any backup, Paul. I'm laying down things and getting structure, and you're coming home and breaking it. I feel like I'm a broken record. Emotionally, I'm not happy. I feel like I'm by myself. What do you think of that, Paul? Ouch. It hurts. It's the truth. Nicholas. He's a really bright boy and he's not challenged, he's not stimulated in a way that he should be. So he just does negative things to get mm -hmm. negative attention. It's not productive. He used to get all the attention for three years, he had mm -hmm. all the attention and then Gabrielle was born. Let's talk about Gabrielle. Gabrielle does what she wants when she wants and she has your consent to do it because you put up with it. But there's no limitations for her. There's no boundaries. And she's pushing it further and further because quite frankly, she's begging for you guys to draw that line with her. And yet again, the children are gonna learn different messages. But all the attention that they try and get from you guys during the day, they get during the night time. I mean, it's a nightmare. Daddy, get me more grape juice. Daddy, get me milk. Daddy, do this. Daddy, do that. It's absolutely ridiculous. Your children, they're learning to behave the way that they are behaving because you are accepting that. Mm. That's made you as a family spiral downwards. Everything Joe said hit home. The truth hurts, but it was a good kind of hurt. Paul and I are always on opposite sides of the fence, and we're pretty much fighting a losing battle. And she really hit on, we have to work together in order for this to work, and we have to back each other up. Are you both prepared to start batting on the same team now? Absolutely. Good, then let's get to work together. The first thing that I do when I go back into a household is to pin up a good structured routine, and that's what the Cantoni family needed. This is your new family routine. When Joe unveiled the routine for us, I was ecstatic. I'm like, you know, why couldn't we think of this? From 4.30 to 5 o'clock, Nick, it's your homework time, all right? So at 5.15 to 5.45, dinner. From 6.30 to 7 p.m., it'll be Gabby's bath time, and then Nick to play with the other parent. So what you can see here is that you're both taking the responsibility in making sure that you both give your children that one-on-one -on -one focused time and they get to have you equally then. All right? Yeah. Okay. Big smiles. <laughs> yeah. I definitely felt that the routine that Joe put in place is really going to help with each one of the kids having more adequate time and one-on-one -on -one attention. Nick, come over with me to this table. This is for Nicholas. It's his booster web chart. I introduced the booster chart for Nicholas because I wanted him to get lots of praise from his parents rather than seeking attention for negative behaviour. So, with the booster web chart here, we've got tasks, date and comments. So we're going to give Nicholas lots of responsibility and different tasks to challenge him. In here, we have a model takes a lot of skill to be able to do it. 
and I think it will be perfect for you. Nicholas was so excited that he wanted to start straight away. So, this is the first diagram and it says number one and you have to put that small piece into the hole. Right, exactly. Then you move on to number two. Good going. He sat down and went through the instructions and had an incredibly large amount of patience to put it all together. And he finished it. Nicholas. You, you great completed job. your model task. <gasps> Nicholas finished it. Can no kidding. Give me five. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> Look at you. That's amazing. Seeing Nicholas so proud of something he accomplished made me feel incredible. It was like that's my boy, you know, tearjerker. Fantastic. Excellent. My dad was really proud of me that I finished the model and he wrote it on my chalk. I'm proud of you, Nick. All right, see that? You can do anything you want, as long as you put your mind to it. Yep. And you're patient, and you try, and you don't give up. My dad's part of me. It makes me feel happy. Later on, Gabrielle became very clingy as she started to whine because she wanted Paul to pick her up. You like that, Nicole? Oh. And in no time, there it was, a full-blown tantrum on our hands. Oh, <laughs> Gabby has become very used to getting her own way by behaving like this. Tantrums, pulling, shouting and yelling. And we want to nip that right in the bud now. Yeah. Right. So, for discipline, we're going to use your ottoman here. OK. OK. okay. We're going to go through the ottoman, regardless to whether she's here or not. Don't worry about that. That's her being angry. That's her banging her head. I was very overwhelmed with Gabrielle's behaviour. It just hurts to see your, your child act like that and cry like that and not be able to console them. Mm -hmm. Let her learn. Yeah, look, that's pure frustration. It really hurt, but we have to do what we have to do to get it right. OK. Oh, no, no bite. Give me, give me, <laughs> right, I want you to come down to Gabrielle's level. I want you to say to her very firmly in a low tone voice, stop shouting and stop biting me. OK. Paul's a big marshmallow when it comes to discipline, and I wanted him to step up and show Gabby that he's not going to tolerate that behaviour anymore. <laughs> Gabrielle. Yeah. Stop shouting <laughs> and stop biting. It's hard for me to stick and be consistent with the, with the children because I feel like I'm being the bad guy. You've always picked her up every time she's behaved like this. This is absolute temper tantrum. Let's implement discipline. Okay. I want you to take her by the hand, take her over to the ottoman, and I want you to say and explain to her why she's been placed on that ottoman. And placing her on this ottoman <laughs> because you haven't listened to Daddy and you're still shouting. Don't fall so away, up, just move away, and when you see that she's moved, you place her back on. And Paul did fairly well when he was placing Gabby on that ottoman. He remained consistent and he followed through. Placed on the ottoman for three minutes. Okay. With Gabrielle, when she was throwing her tantrum, I, it made me feel kind of good, like I was starting to gain control. Gabrielle, Daddy placed you on the, autumn, on the ottoman because you were not listening. I did not like when you were screaming and shouting. I think Paul did really good. He was definitely sweating. He, <laughs> I've never seen him sweat that much just to take care of one of the kids before. It was really hard for him, but I think he did really good with it. Gabrielle. You do not say you're sorry. To Daddy, then you stay here. Gabrielle, as soon as you say you're sorry for your behavior, I will let you off the ottoman. Sorry, Daddy! Oh. Right, I want you to... If Paul just sticks with it, he does get the results that he's searching for. So I was very proud of him. When it comes to parenting, Nina has been shouldering a lot of the responsibilities. So I want Paul to step up 
And that's why I'm introducing the step up, step back technique. Together, I want the pair of you to discuss what you feel is valuable to be able to instill and lay down good foundations for your children and place them into the middle box. Nina and Paul need to agree on what they want to achieve as parents and they'll write those common goals in the middle box. You want to write responsibility. Yes. Trust, yeah, write trust. We definitely need more understanding, no more preconceived notions. So, so can we put stop questioning or we just follow that down oh, the trust? Oh, please, okay? Like you're a king here. Allow me to get a word in edgewise. Honey, don't get right, right into it because you don't want me to get into it. Stop acting like such a bitch 90% of the time. This is what yeah. I don't want. Okay. Neither do I, so just spit it out. Tell her what's wrong. I feel like, you, what, you want to know what's wrong? I feel like everything you're writing down is like a finger pointing towards me. See, this is you, you're a bitch. See, this is you. I didn't call you one name to put you down. You want to talk about respect? There's lack of respect. Just tell you talk back to me. When do I ever just say, when do You know I what? Let's just stick to this. Communication. Once poor Nina started airing their issues, emotions started to run high, and it's going to be very challenging for them to both work together. This step up, step back is to allow not just yourself the things you need to change. But did you hear that in his voice? Oh. Respect. Rossiness, let's bitchy. Don't you see the finger like that? And I say to him, well, I wouldn't be so bitchy if you just listened and you just followed through and you helped me out. This is about letting go of all of that, all right? They need to come together amicably so that they can move on and successfully use their skills with child rearing. I can give you one clear thing that I think you need to step back with and you need to step up with, and that's one warning. Very clearly, you need to step up and give a warning. Mm -hmm. Paul, and you need to step back and only give one. OK. This was an important point for them to realise, because unless they're on the same page, they're going to continue to give their children mixed messages. What responsibility do you have to step up with? Discipline. All right, let's write that down. OK, so, Nina, how will you step back with what you do when it comes to listening? Not repeat myself. Lovely. See, now we've got you guys working together. Mm -hmm. So this is really, really positive, all right? We've got you guys communicating. We've got clear vision. Paul, you're stepping up nicely here. And Nina, we've seen you recognise things that you need to step back with. So it was about bringing the pair of them together and recognising how they were both going to achieve the stuff that they'd written in the middle box. The transition to bedtime can be extremely hectic, and Nina and Paul are going to need a routine to help these children calm down before they go off to sleep. You're cold, you're okay. Here. Snap right in half. A rear bed. Come on, let's go. Let's go read a book. The bear. The end. Right, okay, this is what we're doing right away now. We're doing the stay in bed technique. Yeah. What you're going to do, Paul, tonight mm -hmm. is you're going to place Gabby back into her bed, you're going to tuck her in, and you're going to say, it's bedtime, darling. And I will see you in the morning. Okay. <laughs> you're going to go to sleep now, and I will see you in the morning. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> kiss her goodnight, tell her where her juice is, and say, see you in the morning, darling. Okay. Okay? Gabrielle. There was a very clear reason why I made Paul do the stay in bed technique because he's been the sucker that's been running up and down them stairs with those demands for a very long time. All right, it's bedtime, you, darling. Good night. I love you. The second time, what do you say? It's bedtime, darling. I will see you in the morning. No, no more, Paul. Paul, it's bedtime, darling. The second time you say it's bedtime. The third time you say nothing. The winding down part for Gabrielle in bedtime went very smooth until the point where it was putting her in bed and having her stay in bed. <laughs> Don't wait around for her. You're busy. You've got things to do. This is your evening now. <laughs> Paul followed through with the technique. It worked very, very quickly. I did not think it was at all possible to have Gabrielle be in bed by 8 o'clock. <laughs> Jeez, we're going to be bored. 
This was a major accomplishment for Nina and Paul, and I think they were very surprised to see that it worked. So it means that you guys get a good night's sleep tonight, <laughs> ready for work tomorrow. These two hours are going to make a huge difference for Nina and Paul. It's going to allow them to relax and communicate so that they can work better together as parents. I think we can get used to this. Definitely. <laughs> While Joe's gone, I'm definitely going to be missing some of the guidance from her. <laughs> Definitely. I'm feeling a little nervous about not having Joe around for the next few days because I'm afraid that something will fall through with the schedule she gave us and you feel secure when she's here. Now that I've left the Cantonis, let's just see how they get on without me. Let me see your face real quick. Let me just get your face. Daddy! Okay. I just want to wash your face. Gabrielle, listen to me. Paul, do not let Gabby talk to you like that. It's just disrespectful. Come on, let's get out. Let's... You don't talk to me. I'm making a castle. No, let's get out of the bathtub. No, no, no. You're the boss. I am the boss, Daddy. She certainly is. <laughs> So much to see. The baby animal. Ah, it's mum's turn with Gabby now. Time for Let's see how that goes. Dumbo tried to keep up with the other elephants, but he tripped on his ears and landed in a puddle. <laughs> it's my like. Daddy. Yeah, sure. She wants old softy. Great, Nina. No conversation. Well done. You followed the technique to a T and it's paid off. OK, it's Nicholas's one-on-one -on -one time with Dad. Come on, let's go. What can we play? We're going to go find something. Hmm. I wonder what Dad's going to come up with for playtime. <laughs> So this is all the garbage upstairs, right? So you know where we take that now? Garbage? This is not time to take out the trash. Come on. Come on. Nicholas. Please stop that right now. Nicholas, come on. I, I'd expect more of that than you. Come on, stand up. Paul, he wants to have fun with you. I love him. It's not too late, Paul. You can still play with him. Well, what were we doing upstairs? Come on. All right, I'll tell you what. Nothing was fun upstairs, though. Nothing was fun upstairs? <laughs> he said he didn't get to play with me, so I... Because you did your chores when you were supposed to be playing, right? Well, yeah. That went all wrong. You're going to need to make that up to him. Start eating. Come on. Nope. No more water until you take some bites. You have to take some bites of your lasagna. Gabby's testing you guys. You need to stick together. If you want to get down, you need to take two bites of your nummies. She's three. She can feed herself. She feeds herself every day. Show Daddy how you eat like a big girl. Paul, you're undermining Nina. You should be backing her up. It was just, what else can I get from Dad? You know, I know if I scream a little bit more, Dad's going to, he's going to feed me another bite. OK, Gab, I want to start seeing you eat it by yourself, OK? Because you're mm -hmm. a big girl. And now she's got her way by screaming and shouting. I figured that if she tried it a little, she might be more receptive. She might not even be hungry. Who knows? If she's not eating, does she sit? How long do you let her sit there for before she doesn't eat? When Joe comes back, we'll have to ask her what the right thing to do is. I'm on my way back, and we'll sort this all out. The DVD is a great tool to show parents just how well they've done, but also the mistakes they've made. <laughs> Love the way you didn't fight here, Nina. Mm. You took her straight back into her bedroom. You didn't feed. Okay. That tantrum, fantastic for doing that and mm. walking away and letting go. Can I wash you off really quick with some no. soap? Just a little bit. Get out! 
you're the boss. Yeah, I am the boss. What is going on, Paul? It was um, giving her a bath. What I saw there mm -hmm. was a little girl controlling the way that she behaved around you. And then on top of it, you validated it. Oh, well, you're the boss. Gabby knows exactly what she is doing, trust me. And if you think any less, then you underestimate her, Paul. You could say to her, if you don't turn around and look at Daddy whilst I'm talking to you, then we're getting out of the bath. Let's move on and carry on with the rest of it. He said he didn't get to play with me, so... Because well, you did your chores when you were supposed to be playing, right? Well, yeah. We've got a father here who is meant to be spending time with his son. You're not delivering what he wants from you and deserves from you, and that's your time. I did feel bad about, you know... I was thinking it would only take two minutes to, you know, show him, hey, let's get the trash and throw it out, and then we're gonna move right on to something, but it just didn't turn out that way. You knew you messed up. He knew you messed up at the end. It would have been nice for you to have sat down and said, Nicholas, Daddy messed up, I'm sorry, all right? And what you are doing in the process is teaching your children, hey, sometimes we go off track and we make mistakes. Mm. And that is an important lesson, okay? So food for thought for you to digest. That. You're welcome. So, Paul, when Nina gave Gabby firm direction just to eat a couple of bites, you should have allowed that to happen, and then it would have been fine. But instead, you started to coax Gabby and said, I'll feed you. You undermined everything Nina said when you stepped in. All it's doing is making Gabby realise that, well, Daddy will be on my side. Then we're going back to square one again. We've got good cop, bad cop. OK, so if, they don't, if they're not going to want to eat, it's OK. If you're, then you're all done. And, but then what happens if she says, like, later on, Mom, I'm hungry. Do you make her eat what you gave her, or do you say you had your chance to eat, you're all done? She had a chance to eat. Use your composure to be able to walk over and say, well, if it's not what you want, then, then you'll get down from the table and there's nothing else. Full stop. All right? Mm -hmm. Seem clear? Yeah. Sounds yes, good. Definitely. Good, OK, Thank so let's get back to doing some more work. <laughs> look at them, look, two peas in a pod. After I've shown the DVD footage to the parents, I stick around for the whole day to reinforce any techniques or to give any advice that I feel is necessary. Nicholas, what we got here for you? A game to play with Daddy. <gasps> Guess who? Tonight, Paul had a chance to prove himself that he was willing and able to stick with that routine and spend the quality time he was meant to spend with Nicholas. I'm blue. You're blue? Yep. All right, you ready? I know I ruined Nicholas's one-on-one -on -one time the other night but I'm very anxious in making it up with him. Does your person have white hair? This is all to help Nicholas feel satisfied that he's had attention from his parents. Does your person have peach skin? Wow, Nicholas, good question. My person has eyebrows. So anybody that does not have a brown mustache, you flip down. Oh, you kicked my butt! Look at that! Good job, buddy! Spending one-on-one -on -one time with Nicholas was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I wanted to show Nina how important it was not to struggle with Gabby so that it would allow bath time to be very calming for her. Well, sit back. Take a breather for a minute. Any rudeness, any nonsense for her, I want you to say to her, come on, let's stop that. And if she carries on, you give her a warning and tell her that she'll get out of the bath early. With Nina stepping back, it allowed them to be relaxed with one-on-one -on -one time together. We're down to one more minute in the bathtub. Tonight, Joe taught me that I don't have to be involved so much in bath time with Gabrielle. It went well. Do you know what time it is now? It's time to quiet and down. Right. Quiet time now. Paul and Nina understand what they need to do in order for their children to have a good night's sleep and for themselves to have adequate sleep per night. And I do feel that gradually we are making changes in this household. Before, I feared bedtime, and now I feel a lot more relaxed about it, and I know that it's going to be easier and easier. You're right. Gabby, Judge is very pleased to see you sleeping like a big gal in your bed now. Night, night, darling. Say good night, Jojo. Take care, okay? 
so can I have a hug to say goodbye? There's been some good, positive changes in this family. Nina's more relaxed since Paul has stepped up his responsibilities of being a father, and that's given them more quality time as a family, made them more happy and given them more time as a couple. So, take care. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're more than welcome. You will be missed. Joe has had a major impact on our family. Paul, yes. step up, step up, step up. Constantly, so Nina can step back. Nicholas absolutely adored the time he had with you today. And I adored it just the same. And you're on the way to building a very special relationship with your children, and that's priceless. So keep up the good work, all right? Take care. You too. Our family was almost falling apart, and you helped us pull it back together again. And I'm going to make my own way out now and give you guys an evening. All right, Thank take you care. so much. Take care. Bye -bye. We'll Thank miss you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. They are working closer together and they are supporting one another, so I'm happy to see that the pair of them have connected again. Joe came to our house, I was at my boiling point. Our family was falling apart. Nice hit, Nick. <laughs> Come on, Nick, you gotta go do homework. Yeah. I feel like Paul and I are doing really well with the step up, step back routine. I actually feel like he's on my side now, or we're on the same side together. Oh, don't spill it. Don't, don't. I've definitely stepped up, um, taking on more disciplinary measures with the kids. Uh-oh. Oh. We have to be careful with these. A big part of my change as a parent is not looking at my kids like they're chores. It's fun to be a mom now. You color. You all done with this? Want me to throw it away now? Having the bedtime technique and having it working gives my wife and I a lot more quality time. It's absolutely beautiful to see her smiling again. Hey, Wendy, here's my smile. Look at those beautiful stockings. Let me see. Nicholas, I see, starting to open up to me and my wife. Mom, look. Good work. Nick, that's a beautiful picture. It's just an all-around miracle. That's what it is. Hey, Nicholas, can you do Look at Mommy. He's such a deep little kid, and he has so much to say, and he has so much to offer, and all he wanted was attention all along. I'm impressed. That is great work. Very good. Oh, um, it made me happy because my mom and dad spend more time with me now. Where are we going, guys? Fashion? <laughs> this whole experience made me realize how incredible my children are and how precious my time is with them. I definitely feel like Paul and I have turned over a new leaf and our children are benefiting from that. I definitely feel like we are starting off on a new slate. Thanks, Joe, for helping my family.